Hello, beautiful people of the internet. How are you doing today? My name is Jackie and happy Jane Austen July. In this video today, I'm going to be doing another one of my Jane Austen rankings videos. However, instead of ranking all Jane Austen novels today, I'm going to be ranking all Jane Austen couples. In this video, I'm going to be ranking all of the major couples from Jane Austen novels. So I'm primarily going to be focusing on the main relationships of the works. So I'm not going to be talking about periphery couples like Mr. and Mrs. Bennet. I mean, obviously we know that if I was including all couples, the worst couple would be Lydia and Mr. Wickham. I mean, I actually feel so bad for Lydia that her youthful folly means she has to spend the rest of her life with this guy who does not, give a rat's ass about her. So I'm sorry if your favorite Jane Austen couple is ranked low on this list. I don't think any of them are that bad. It's just based on my own personal preference. And if you disagree with me, feel free to leave your own ranking in the comments section. So coming in at number seven on my list is going to be Edmund Bertram and Fanny Price from Mansfield Park. And I feel bad. I don't want to constantly be picking on Fanny Price because I actually do enjoy her character in certain aspects. However, I feel like this relationship is just not that interesting. And after reading the book, I didn't really understand why these two would fall in love with each other. I don't think they have a lot of romantic chemistry together. I don't know what my cat's doing. She's sniffing all my stuff, but. Anyways, the problem that I have with Edmund and Fanny is that I just didn't leave the book believing in their love for each other. There are also first cousins, which Obviously, as a 21st century person, that's really icky. I mean, I'm not ranking them last solely because of that, because we just have to realize that in this time period, that was seen as a perfectly acceptable thing for people to do. So I don't think we can really apply 21st century standards to their relationship, though obviously, like, nowadays we know better than to marry our cousins. Uh, I would hope you do. I think the real problem is that I just don't buy into them as a couple. And the book really made me feel like Edmund was settling for Fanny because he couldn't have Mary Crawford and he realized that Mary Crawford wasn't the person that he thought she was. So to me, these two are just not a very interesting couple and they don't have romantic or sexual chemistry. I guess one thing Edmund and Fanny will always share is their sense of moral righteousness, so I bet they'll be a super fun couple to have at parties. Coming in at number six is a couple that I think a lot of other people would probably rank higher than me, and that's Catherine Moreland and Henry Tilney from Northanger Abbey. I know a lot of people love Henry Tilney, and personally, I don't like him. Uh, he was occasionally witty, but I found a lot of his behavior sexist and annoying. And I think the reason why I ranked them slightly higher than Edmund and Fanny is because I think the novel, when I read it, I understood and I believed that Catherine had romantic feelings for Henry. However, I didn't really get a strong sense of why it was that Henry was in love with Catherine. I really like Catherine as a character, but I will confess I am a Henry Tilney hater, so I am bringing that bias to my ranking, but I just didn't believe in his love for her when I read this book. I will say, though, in the Northanger Abbey movie with J.J. Field, as Mr. Tilney, I really liked him in that movie, and I thought his and Catherine's relationship was really cute in that adaptation, but if we're going solely based on the source material, I didn't really dig their relationship. Now, the next two couples on my list are really neck and neck in my ranking, and they both come from the same book, so I'm just going to talk about them together, and that is 
Eleanor Dashwood and Edward Ferris, and Marianne Dashwood and Colonel Brandon, both from Sense and Sensibility. There are certain things that I like about both of these couples, and also certain flaws that I see in them, and I'm not really sure which one I would want to rank higher. Eleanor and Edward, I think, are a fine couple, but not the most interesting. Eleanor and Edward are a more age-appropriate couple, and when I read the book, I did believe that they genuinely had feelings for each other. However, I just don't think they're the most interesting Jane Austen couple, probably due to Eleanor's reserved nature and Edward's lack of a strong personality. He is not the most interesting love interest, so while these two are a good fit, they are not the most interesting to read about. Meanwhile, you have Marianne and Colonel Brandon, who I want to say I prefer, but I think there are more troubling things in their relationship that I think make it more unrealistic and less likely for success. They do have a very significant age difference, and again, like I said with Edmund and Fanny, that's something that in this time period wouldn't have been an issue, so I don't want to discredit them just because of that. But I do think it's a little icky that Colonel Brandon talks about how much Marianne reminds him of his first love, Eliza. That skews me out a little bit. Don't get me wrong, I totally love Alan Rickman's Colonel Brandon, rest in peace, and he could totally read me Shakespeare any day of the week. I just feel like this age dynamic in their relationship is an aspect that's not going to stand the test of time, whereas I think Eleanor and Edward's relationship is better set up for success, but they're less interesting to me as a reader. So I'm inclined to rank Marianne and Colonel Brandon higher based on my own personal preference, but I'm not quite sure, so I would really like to hear in the comments your thoughts. Now we are down to our top three couples, and I just want to say I love all of the top three couples together. I think all of them are fantastic, and it was really hard to do this ranking because I love them all. But ultimately, I put here at number three Emma Woodhouse and George Knightley from Emma. What I love about Emma and Mr. Knightley is that they sort of have a friendship before they become a romantic pairing, and I just love friends to lovers couples. I think friendship is a great foundation to build a relationship on, and while some people find Mr. Knightley's behavior towards Emma condescending, personally I didn't get that impression. I just genuinely felt like he was someone who cared about her and who wanted her to be the best version of herself. And so they were comfortable speaking openly and frankly with each other because of how long they have been in each other's lives. However, there is, again, a weird age dynamic in this relationship. I believe that in the book, Emma is... 21 and Mr. Knightley is 36 and as somebody who is 21 I would not want to date a 36 year old man. It's also really weird that Mr. Knightley tells Emma that he thinks he's been in love with her since she was 14 I think which is just so creepy. A 14 year old girl is so young. But I do believe that Mr. Knightley's intentions in this relationship are meant to be seen as good. He is willing to move into Emma's family home because Emma doesn't want to be away from her father. And that to me really speaks volumes about his feelings for her because he is willing to go against the patriarchal standards of the day to make his future wife happy. And I mean, when he says, if I loved you less, I might be able to talk about it more. Like, oh my god. That's so romantic. I love it. Now, at number two on my list, I decided to put Anne Elliot and Frederick Wentworth from Persuasion. Now, personally, I actually enjoy Emma more than Persuasion, a spoiler for my Jane Austen novel rankings video, but the reason why I put these two higher than Emma and Mr. Knightley is because I just genuinely believe with all of my heart that these two are going to make a really successful marriage. 
Anne and Captain Wentworth had gotten engaged years before the events of this book, but Anne was persuaded to break it off by her relatives. And the fact that years have gone by and they still love each other shows to me that their feelings for each other are real. Sometimes in other Jane Austen novels, the couple gets together very suddenly. And with these two, I just genuinely believed that their love was going to stand the test of time. It was 100% real. Persuasion is, in my opinion, Jane Austen's most mature novel, and I think these two definitely have the most mature relationship. They are one of the Jane Austen couples that I am most confident in their love lasting a lifetime. And finally, some of you out there are probably rolling your eyes that I put these two at number one because they are the most popular Jane Austen couple, but I think for good reason. My favorite Jane Austen couple is obviously Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy from Pride and Prejudice. I just, oh my god, I love these two. These two might be my favorite couple in all of fiction. Definitely in any book that I've ever read. I love them so much. There's a huge smile on my face just thinking about them. I'm just gonna be honest and say that in every single one of these Jane Austen ranking videos I end up doing, the person or thing or relationship from Pride and Prejudice is probably always going to be number one. And that's probably in part due to the nostalgia factor for me. When I was a kid, I had an illustrated classic version of Pride and Prejudice. I read it all the time and I fell in love with the story and the characters and most of all the relationship between Elizabeth and Mr. Darcy. Ever since I was a child, I have always wanted to have a love like these two have. I think they are a perfect, perfect couple. And Pride and Prejudice is a perfect book. I don't think I would change a single thing about it. Elizabeth and Mr. Darcy are the most iconic Jane Austen couple, and I think they have every right to be because their relationship arc is absolutely amazing. They start off hating each other and then their relationship teaches them both how to get over their own character flaws and they end up just, they're just soulmates, honestly. I love their relationship. I love how they challenge each other. I love how Miss Darcy respects Elizabeth and the end of the novel says that she even teaches Mr. Darcy's sister that a woman should always be able to speak freely with her husband and that a good marriage should be a marriage between equals. And that is a message that all these years later still rings true. What I love about these two is that they have not only love but also respect for each other and they are a true marriage of minds. Even though Jane Austen novels are 100% innocent and chaste, I still feel like these two are pulsating with romantic and sexual tension on every page. They just have an amazing dynamic together and their relationship makes both of them better people. I absolutely love these two. I think they are perfect for each other and I'm still waiting for a man who loves me like this. It's kind of sad. I've realized that I'm older now than Elizabeth Bennet was when she got engaged to Mr. Darcy and I'm still single. <laughs> so, so single. All jokes aside, when I was a kid, these two really shaped my perception of what love is. I really looked up to Elizabeth Bennet and I told myself that I was not going to settle for anyone who loved me less than Mr. Darcy loved Elizabeth. To me, they were a role model for a perfect relationship and I still think their relationship is one of the best in all of literature. No, the best in all of literature. Elizabeth and Mr. Darcy are the greatest love story of all time, no question, and you can quote me on that. 
So guys, those are my rankings of all Jane Austen couples. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me. I post new videos every single Wednesday. If you disagree with me on any of these rankings, then leave your own ranking in the comments section. I would love to see it. If you put Elizabeth and Mr. Darcy anywhere but first, you're wrong, but that's okay. You're entitled to your wrong opinion. I'm just kidding. In all seriousness, I would love to hear what you guys think. My social media links are going to be in the description if you want to follow me on Tumblr, Instagram, or be my friend on Goodreads. Thank you so much for watching, everyone, and I hope you have a gleeful rest of your day. Bye, and I'll see you in the next video.